I am going to go ahead and show you an installation of 164 cc Yuminashi big bore kit on my Honda Trail 125. I had a catastrophic failure the last time I had a 164 cc kit. I think it was my installation. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and go through this. Uh, first of all, some parts that come in the kit. You've got a little piston here. You've got your wrist pin, some rings, a couple of snap rings to hold the wrist pin in, and then over here on the floor, you've got the actual cylinder itself. That's a 60 millimeter bore, along with a head gasket and another gasket that seals the oil between the cylinder and the engine itself. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, and actually I would recommend strongly for those viewers who are watching this, Please do it at double time or 2x speed because it's going to take a bit of time to take everything apart, put it all together, assemble it, torque everything down. You can slow it down on those parts that you're most interested in. Otherwise, you're going to waste too much time. All right, first, first step is pull the piston out. There is no instructions with the kit, so you have to go online, which I just did. Um, you have one little oil ring two little tiny side rings. These are a lot thinner than the main rings. And then you've got a silver top ring and a black second ring. So it goes silver ring, black ring, one of these little side rings, the oil ring, and then this other side ring. And those, these three all stack together in this third piston land right there. All right. And uh, the other thing to note on the inside of this piston, you see where it says Yuminashi right there on the, the bottom, that goes toward your exhaust port. So this is your exhaust port side and this will be your intake side. So just some quick tips there. So the way this is assembled, you throw the oil ring on as the very first thing and I don't want to bend it too far to open it. So I'll just kind of Slide it in to the correct groove, just like that. The next ring is going to be one of these side rings, and I'm actually going to put that on the bottom of this oiling ring, and it's going to be 60 degrees off of that little slot in the oil ring that I just put in. All right. So again, this is a little bit tricky. I'm trying to get it about 60 degrees offset here. And looks like he's wanting to go on the top side. That's not a big deal. It can either go on the top or the bottom. So the next one will obviously have to go on the bottom. Okay, so I got that there. And so now you go 120 degrees off of that. So here's your slot, here's the first gap in the side ring, and your second gap should be over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. This time, hopefully, getting it on the correct side of this oiling ring. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. I think that'll, that'll get it mostly. There it goes in. And you kind of just work it all the way around here. sometimes wants to get hung up or he doesn't want to sit underneath but it's like we're getting it okay you can see how we got it all the way in and again my zero position my clocking positions up here at the intake port okay now as I rotate this down now I want the opening on the second ring to be right here about 120 degrees off and then the first ring is going to go over here so, now on these rings, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's some writing on the top of those rings, this one as well. And those always have to face up, so this is pretty critical that you keep those upright. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the second ring, and again, this goes in the middle, and I'm gonna clock that about 120 degrees off of this intake port. And again, I'm gonna try my best to not scratch the piston too much. Not that it matters too greatly, as long as you're not gouging it. 
Okay, so I've got it just started in there and I'm just gonna work this around. There it goes. And that's it right there. Now you'll notice that it doesn't fit very square in there. It It's uh, quite oversized, but that's how they're supposed to be. And then this first ring, again, looking to make sure the marking is up here on top. And I'm going to go ahead and put that ring in here as well. Just like that, getting started. And this is your first ring. Okay, almost. There we go. Okay, that piston is got all its rings. Okay, the next step is going to go ahead and put in one of the retaining rings now before I try to install this into the vehicle. So these are your snap rings. And what these do is they prevent the wrist pin from going out on either side. And what I like doing is I like using a pair of needle nose pliers here. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of these retaining rings in, hopefully. You'll want to get it right in this little slot here. And then if you put a little bit of pressure and hold it in with your finger, you sometimes can get lucky and get these things in pretty nicely. There, just like that. So that piston ring is now in. And what I wanna do is the gap is actually right here and you wanna move that gap up to the top of the ring. So I'm just gonna work it back and forth with the uh, needle nose pliers. Kinda just get it up there. That might work actually a little bit better than using the pick. Almost there, just about. Yeah, actually that worked a lot better. Okay, so now you can see that the gap in the uh, retaining ring is right there at the top of the piston. And now we're gonna go ahead and grease the wrist pin and I'll put that in partially on the other side and then we'll install it on the bike. This is a fun bit. Gotta get a little bit dirty here. Okay, nice and lubed up. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and you put it in just slightly on the other side of where you just put that retaining ring started. I don't want to go too far. Right about like that. That allows room for you to slide it into the actual uh, connecting rod. So let's go over there. And again, intake side, that's going to be always on the top. Exhaust side is going to be on the bottom for this particular bike. Now you'll see, if you look down here, uh, I have a little piece of plastic holding the connecting rod so that it doesn't damage the edge of the engine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this piston. And this is going to be a little finagling. Again, 2X is your friend, guys. And I'm going to try and get that into the connecting rod. actually quite a bit harder than it may look. Okay, and that is how that's done. Okay, so now the wrist pin is through the piston into the connecting rod, nice and greased up, ready to go. So now I'm going to put in that second retain and hopefully not shoot it across the room as I've done on multiple occasions in the past. All right, here we go. So exact same technique. I'm gonna hold it right on the end here and that should do it. I'm going to actually just kind of reach in here, see if I can get it started. This side here, 
Again, I'll try not to shoot it too far. Wow. And I think I made it. So that's a success. Anytime you get these little things without flying across the room, uh, you're doing pretty well. Then I'm going to do that little crawl, just moving the ring with my uh, needle nose pliers so that the gap is right on top. Just a little bit more. And I think I'm going to call it right there. So that's a fully assembled piston. Crankshaft, this pin. Here's a little trick I found out uh, after pulling off a couple of these top ends. If you put a little oil on this gasket here and the green side actually faces the cylinder, it gets it's easily removed the next time. And so that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to it. I'm just going to go ahead and place this temporarily right here where it goes until I remove that piece of plastic for the piston. And then on the inside of the cylinder, since it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add some grease to the inside of that very quickly. Just so it doesn't uh, start out dry. And then we'll wipe off any excess that gets pushed out by the piston on its first time through. Now make sure that these two little guides, these little bosses here, are installed either on the engine itself or on the cylinder. If you forget those, then you're not going to have a very good lineup. Okay, make sure you don't damage this gasket here. You kind of have to finagle the chain through it as well. There we go. Right, that's pretty good right there. I'm going to just gently set this piston down so it doesn't get damaged. Then I'm going to grab the cylinder. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to slide it right on. And you have to turn the wheel in order to get enough room here. Okay. Here comes the fun bit. So you got to get the piston go in the cylinder and then you've got to work the rings so that they compress and so it's a little bit of work to try to get it all to go because remember those rings on the piston are oversized for the cylinder at first so you kind of have to work it but eventually as usually go. Definitely takes some finagling, but after a couple of minutes where I didn't need you to see that, uh, we got it to go. You just have to kind of work your fingers around and push the piston rings as you're doing it. Now I'm getting the chain on through here. Again, checking that my seal is good, that these little bosses are outstanding, and then we're going to go ahead and fit it on there. On there. There you go. Okay, and you can see the piston has pushed out a lot of that grease. Go ahead and wipe that out. The next step is to put this rolling pin, roller pin back in here, and it goes just like that. And then this pin here goes right through that hole once you get it situated. It's a little bit I guess everything's finagly, so stop saying that, but we'll get it. Okay, I think, I, I think I'm on the hole. And then you just go ahead and screw that in, but don't tighten it down until after we've put everything together a little bit further. There it goes. So we got it just nicely in there so we know where it's at, but again, not to work down. Now comes the head gasket and the cylinder head itself. So come on over here.
and on this head gasket, two of the holes are larger than the others. And those are the ones that are gonna have these pushed in. Same on the cylinder head. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install those, these little guides, just like on the cylinder itself. And then this, has to go just like that and then you have to push it on. So I was having trouble getting this head gasket to fit over that uh, dowel there but Sharpie cap, get a couple taps, seem to work pretty well. The screws will tighten in the rest of the way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the head on. And lining up these studs to the hole. Grab this timing chain. Put it in through the gap here. Then slowly and gently slide it. I'm gonna actually loop this timing chain right around there. And then hopefully all things are good. I should be able to get this on. Now that I have the head on, I'm going to go ahead and bolt it down. There's a little washer and then the little nut. So the aluminum or steel colored ones go on this one, this one, and this one, and the copper one goes on this guy over here on this side. And you tighten these with kind of a cross pattern once you get them hand tight. I'm just getting these snug first before I start doing any sort of torquing. You kind of do it in stages here before you actually get the full torque, which is 17 and a half foot pounds. All right, that one's torqued down. That one's perfect. That one's torqued. And that one's torqued. I'll give it one more go. That's all torqued. The next step is to replace these bolts right here. And then torque them down to seven and a half foot pounds. All right, that one looks torqued. And that one looks torqued as well. Now again, progressively bump these up in pressure. You don't want to distort the head. Since we already have the torque wrench set at seven and a half, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this uh, pin for the roller, which also goes to seven and a half foot pounds of torque. Seems like my... Now we have to make sure that we're still at top dead center. You can see the little mark in our timing hole. Everything looks good there. So now we're going to go ahead and put this cam sprocket back on and the little notch coincides with this, so you have to make sure that this notch here on the cylinder head, this zero here, and this little bent metal tab and the notch all line up. So it'll take a couple of goes to get it right. So here you can see the alignment, little nub, little zero here, and again you can see the little tick mark inside of the timing area. All right, the next step that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and screw this in uh, to hold that cam sprocket in there. And then we torque that down to 20 foot pounds. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to hold the crankshaft with a breaker bar. And that's connected, obviously, to the timing chain. And then I'm going to torque it down to this guy here. 
It's a little bit tricky, but I think it's doable. fully torqued. All right, the next step is we're going to go ahead and tighten the tensioner for the timing chain, which is right down here. It's kind of hard to see. And we're going to tighten that to seven and a half foot-pounds of torque. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine in the counterclockwise direction by holding onto the crankshaft here. I'm going to go one full two or four cycles to bring it back to top dead center again. And then we're going to take a look at our valves to see where we are. And the valve clearance for the intake should be four thousandths of an inch. And the valve clearance for the exhaust should be between six and seven thousandths of an inch. I went ahead and measured the clearance here at top dead center and it is below four thousandths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this bolt here and then you hold the center thing uh, and that'll adjust that clearance and then retighten this. Okay, and I just uh, reset these valves Looks like they're right at between three and four, which is about perfect for this intake. And then we'll go ahead and do the exhaust side as well. So once you have the valve set, go ahead and torque that nut back down to six and a half foot pounds. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the covers back on these valve openings, and I'm gonna to torque those down to seven and a half foot pounds. I'm gonna now go ahead and put this uh, cover back on the uh, timing sprocket here and torque that down to seven and a half foot pounds. I'm now going to go ahead and put the timing cover back on, timing full cover back on, and also the crankshaft cover back on. They go on at four and a half foot pounds and six foot pounds each. Now that I put the uh, two covers back on, the crankshaft and the timing, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the oil sensor back in here at 11 foot-pounds. Then go ahead and connect up the oil sensor and then the oil sensor guard. And I'm supposed to torque that to 9 foot-pounds, this little uh, guard nut. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the spark plug at 12 foot-pounds of torque. And then I'm going to reroute my O2 sensor wire and plug it back into its little receptacle up here. And it routes right through here. This little clip, this little clip goes behind my crankcase ventilation tube, behind the... Uh, I actually don't know what tube this is. <laughs> behind this tube anyway, and uh, plugs into the receptacle right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and clip the zip tie that I used previously to hold the throttle body up. I'm going to go ahead and put the seal with the little pegs down over the opening on the cylinder head here. And then I'm going to torque these little guys down to nine foot pounds. Now I'm actually not going to use a torque wrench. I'm going to do it by feel because there's just not enough room. All right, the next step is to connect this crankcase ventilation hose here and the air intake hose between the air box and the throttle body. I'm gonna start reassembling all the other components of the motorcycle the way I took it off. Starting with this little guy right here. And notice I always put the little uh, parts that go with it underneath. Then the fairings. This is an old muffler, so ignore that. And then I'm gonna put on uh, my center rack, put on the muffler. Those are bolted on at 20 foot-pounds at the mounting points. 
down at the exhaust outlet on the head, um, you have to use a 12 millimeter wrench open and it's of no real torque setting, just get it snug. Put on the uh, little bit that fits n under the muffler. And then finally, we've got this uh, bash plate that I'll put back on. Following that, we'll go ahead and replace the oil drain plug. Fill it up with a quart of motorcycle oil, 10W30 or 10W40. In this case, I'll do 10W40. And we should be able to do a new fueling system, a uh, new fueling map. I'll go ahead and load that onto the bike and uh, go ahead and start it. Now, a couple of comments. For you to have a 164cc kit on this bike, you need a couple of things. One, probably a big throttle uh, body like I have on this bike. You'll need to have a sport exhaust of some sort. I personally have a Takagawa. And also you need some sort of fueling commander or fueling uh, system that allows you to bump up the amount of fuel that your fuel injector uh, uses. Otherwise it'll run hot or lean and that can be very damaging to the bike. So aside from that, I'll go ahead and get all those pieces back on. And uh, following that and the exhaust, we'll go ahead and start up the bike and see if it runs. All right, I've loaded the new fuel map into the motorcycle for 164 cc without the Takagawa air filter using the original air box. This is the first time starting it. We'll see how it goes. Started right up, first try. Sounds really nice. I don't hear any bottom end uh, noise, top end noise. Everything sounds pretty good. I'll say this is a success for now. Over the next couple of days, I'll be going ahead and breaking the cylinder in nice and smooth and gentle. We'll see if it lasts this time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and uh, give a like. Thank you.